So Carignan is the king of mildew, um, so much so that when it's mixed into a, a field blend, we'll just go to the Carignan vines and see if there's mildew on those. And if there's not, we can be pretty well sure that there's probably not a lot of mildew in this block. Um, Carignan has a lot of things uh, working against you when it comes to mildew. First of all, it's a massive vine. You can see with how giant these trunks are and how um, plush this canopy is that this is an extremely vigorous variety. And what that does is it restricts airflow through the canopy, it restricts sunlight, um, and both those things uh, lead to a happy home for mildew. Um, the second thing is that Carignan is a fairly thin-skinned variety, so its fruit is very easily infected by, by the fungus. Um, so you'll see mildew appearing on the clusters really early in Carignan. Um, but we can deal with one of those, and that's canopy management. Uh, so we are very diligent about getting, uh, getting in and opening up these canopies. And then with the help of the wind, this is a very, very windy site. So the wind is our main ally as far as drying out mildew spores and, and killing them that way. And then sunlight is the second part. So as long as the clusters get some good sunlight throughout the day, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have pretty good luck with preventing mildew. So in a mildew control program, um, maybe the most important thing is scouting as far as um, learning where, where the mildew is and knowing where to uh, focus your efforts. So scouting simply involves walking up and down your vineyard, um, knowing the areas that are prone to certain pests and, and looking for them and um, assessing the magnitude of the problem. Where mildew is concerned, what I'm looking for is vines, kind of like this one here, that just immediately you can see this mat of foliage. And even though this is there to protect the fruit from sun, I, can, I would still be worried that maybe it's um, restricting some airflow into the vine. So this would be a vine that I would stop and check. You can't check every vine, of course, so you need to know the vines that um, have the most potential for, for issues. And there's mildew in this vine. So um, clearly this wasn't extensive during flowering because if that was the case, these berries probably wouldn't have even gotten this big. Um, but at this point, this fruit will have a hard time ripening. It'll crack um, and it'll essentially be useless. So at, at this point, um, we'd wanna go through and open up these vines even more and burn this off um, and then make sure that this fruit isn't making it into the, to the picking bins once the, once the crew goes through um, during harvest. So that, that means that everybody needs to be educated about what mildew looks like um, so that it doesn't get picked because of all those problems that we see in the winery. Um, and as you can see that the powdery really goes right all the way into the middle of the cluster and and it really kind of is starts there and then and then kind of continues to move out into the berries once once the berries size up like this and you can also the cracking can also lead to um, botrytis which is a, a normally a later season infection once there's sugar in the fruit and of course um, that's also something we don't like. Um, we, don't, we don't make Sauterne here, um, so we don't want Botrytis in our, in our fruit. And Zinfandel, though not as susceptible to powdery as Carignan, um, is very susceptible to Botrytis. So watching powdery and Zinfandel is really important for that reason as well, um, so you don't get Botrytis issues down the road. All right, so this is a vine um, that could use a little bit more um, leafing, it's, it has mildew, um, and it's, it's a case where we want to dry that out. Um, so if somebody were to come in here, right now we're on the shade side of the vine or the morning side of the vine. Um, so that means that at the hottest point of the day, when the sun is at its hottest at about, around three o'clock and later, um, 
this side of the vine is going to be shaded. So this side is safe to leaf because you're you're not as worried about sunburn um, as you would be on the other side of the vine. So this is usually where we start. If, if a mildew infection gets really bad, then we'll have to be more aggressive. Um, but to start, we'd, we'd come in here. And again, this vine has been leafed and shoot thinned twice. So it just shows the, the power of carignan and, and how, how much foliage it throws and how big the leaves are. Um, but we'll come in here and just continue to take leaves around this fruit zone to let this soft, gentle morning sun help us with burning off this mildew. So we're taking leaves and then we're also taking uh, lateral shoots or secondary shoots as we see them um, to get this even more open so that I should be able to see sunlight if I look through the vine, I should easily be able to see daylight on the other end. Um, we're also gonna go, this is the northwest, north and northwest side of the vine, and leaf that a bit as well, being careful not to overexpose the western side. But we really wanna get this part of the vine because our wind at Evangelo reliably comes from uh, the bay and the, and the beginning of the delta here, which is coming from this, this northwestern side. Um, so we really want that wind to be able to penetrate easily into the vine. So we want the northwestern portion of that vine to be, to be well open. Um, and at this point, I mean, this is an aggressive leafing, but in a mildew area, um, we're going to be more worried about mildew here than, than the mild sunburn we might get from this side of the vine being so leafed. Um, and again, that's just to help with the, with the rest of our block um, to make sure this infection doesn't get out of control.